But you know what? At the end of the day, that's just how it works. You, sometimes you have to, you know, sign a deal with the devil to make value. A Cards with Michael production. What's up, YouTube? Today we have Ultimate Masters, of course, is our next box. And of course, second cam, trying out another different angle. I actually really like this angle. It's my favorite so far. Also, the lighting, of course, is great. So, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and do some little slippies. All right. Got plenty of sponsors for these Ultimate Masters, uh, these Masters boxes. They all, of course, have 24 packs. So double the amount of packs in a collector box. But also, curiously, um, you know, only two-thirds the amount of packs in the... Uh, the actual booster packs themselves so you know for me i do enjoy opening collector packs because it's like 12 packs of oozy goodness uh with ultimate masters packs or just masters packs in general it is 24 packs and it is still pretty nice of course you can hit some really really good cards i think for with ultimate masters the chase mythic this time is actually going to be uh cavern of souls um and we'll see if we can get one of those and uh here we have adam who also is getting the topper fasty ronnie w YLV, James, Matt, Chris, and Robocop. So that's going to be the order. We're going to open the box up at the very end, uh, but we will remember that it is for Adam. And without further ado, let's open this box. Look at that. Such an epic art. Um, Ultimate Masters, of course, was also one of the newest, the newest, actually, Masters set. Uh, not including, of course, Double Masters. Um, so it does have this nice little uh, rectangle, like, square-like shape, which I really, really enjoy because it makes it easier to stack. It really makes it easier to stack. All right, go ahead, open this guy up. Oh, having no trouble. So this is what the box looks like. All right, so this um, box hopper will stay for the very, very end. All right, um, box hoppers have been so insane. Like this, I, uh, <laughs> I've opened two box hoppers in my life. All right, first four packs going into Adam. I've opened uh, two of these in my life and uh, I then looked at TCG Player and I was like, wait, these box hoppers are terrible. Of course, I opened two that were both like $10, the, the two man lands, the black red one and like the green white one. And I was like, sad. But hopefully today we'll open something so much better. All right, let's start with Adam O's first pack. Ooh. Oh, and by the way, I love this, uh, this infinity sign. This kind of like this, what? Hmm? Wait a moment. Ultimate Masters is... Was it always like this? I forgot. So this is the foil in the first rare is Woodfall Primus. I love this card. It's a nice little cubable, cubable card. Songs of the Damned, Stinger Fling Spider, and Malevolent Whispers are uncommons. Um, oh yeah, it is like this. I've only opened like so. I've never actually able was uh, never was actually able to draft this set. By the way, um, so my exp oh Kodama's Reach, mm, five color, good stuff. Anyways, more bad stuff. Um, I never was able to draft this set, so this is actually the one set where my knowledge is just the lowest, just the lowest possible. I do know Cavern of Souls. I know a bunch of the Mythics are, of course, worth something. I know Karn is worth something. Karn. I know Lily is worth something, but uh, otherwise, I'm going to go slowly through the packs and let my editor add the prices uh, in case I skip something that that's worth something. Um, all right, Adam. That was pack one. I have no idea what Woodfall Premix is, but I do know I take it all the time in cube because I also like Crozen. Uh, wait, what was that card called? I also like Kodama's Reach, which helps, which helps you ramp, get your colors, and you know, play things like Woodfall Primus. All right, pack number two for Adam. We have our little 1-1 one, one elemental token. I love it. Yeah, it's so fun. There's two 1-1 one, one elemental tokens in the set. Look at that. This is from that Molten uh, creation. Hey, a little treasure cruise foil. This is probably like a buck, right? Um, yeah, let's keep going. And a Daybreak Coronet. Oh, what a bummer. Why did they reprint this? Why did they reprint it? It was worth some money, but still, like, this is not a good card in limited. All right. Um, Lava Spike. Ooh, wow, that art. Oh, man. This is, so many of these cards are new to me because I really haven't opened that many of these. And so I'm just appreciating the art. Look at that. This alternate art. All right, that's a little freaky. I'm going to keep going. Unbroil Rights. Oh, the value. The value. I love this card. And Prismatic Lens. Five color good stuff. Five color good stuff. I love this kind of stuff. Ah, oh, oh, okay. Um, and of course course we have our commons um i don't think i wouldn't say uh you know any of these are probably worth anything um but you know I, i'm not an expert of this set okay adamo we still have two more packs for you and uh we'll just keep going down the line so 
I should do a little bit more randomization, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. I am literally just randomly taking a pack from the box, but uh, you know, just to be fair, let's go ahead and just do a little randomization. Let's go ahead and put this box into the floor, and we'll keep going. We'll keep going. All right, pack number three for Adamo. Let's see how we do. Let us see how we do. Oh, and the worst thing about Daybreak Cornet, sorry, I just want to qu quickly chat about it. Enchant creature with another aura attached to it. Like, that is not intuitive. I mean, I have definitely played against someone who put a Daybreak Cornet, or attempted to, on a creature that didn't already have an aura, and then I just had to say, look, I'm so sorry, it's a confusing card. And you can't do that. It's really sad. All right, 6-6 six, six black, warm token, which is probably made from a reflection. Hey, another nice little foil. Hooting Mandrills. Of course, the original foil is actually worth a lot because it's an OG foil that's uh, being played in Legacy. Um, this delve ma means that, you know, this could be a one green mana trample 4-4, four, four, which it kind of just checks all the boxes. Four toughness, can't can't get lightning bolted. Is that card getting reprinted in Core 2021? Probably, maybe. Um, and it also, it, it costs more than two mana, so it can't be fatal pushed, and it can't be uh, abrupt decayed. It costs more than three mana. So Hooting Mandrills kind of checks all the boxes. It's innocuously powerful. All right. And we have a Tauran Sky Summoner. Wow, this set's so awesome. Like, the, I love these newness of the borders. I love this logo. Uh, ah, just this little infinite logo. All right. Ancestors Chosen is a nice little uncommon. Apprentice Necromancer. Wild Hunger. And, of course, we got our commons. Uh, if you guys... For the, so I'm definitely going to do another Ultimate Masters box. Another YouTuber, Blissful Bash, has reached out. He'd like to sponsor someone. We're, we're, we're working on the logistics. It's probably going to be next week. Ultimate Masters for me is just such the fun set. And give me some feedback if you'd like me to open the commons first and then rare for these packs. So I, I will do that. I forgot, totally forgot that the rare was first. All right. Or maybe this is just because these were made in Japan or something. I just, I don't remember. All right. Got a little spider token. Desperate Ritual. Ah, another really... All these foils have been all-stars for you, Adamo. Um, and an Urborg. Urborg. <laughs> Tomb of Yawgmoth. I love this card as well. It's not really that insane for five color, but it does kind of make it so that you're never going to have issues with uh, Swamp Mana. I think this is also worth a few bucks, too. I think this newness of this art is nice. And, of course, this is one of the potential box hoppers. So if it is our box hopper, that would be really good because I think it's worth a lot. All right. Here we have our Heap Doll. Nice little... 1-1 one, one Scarecrow, and Conflagrate, Meringue, River Prowler. Love that card as well. Love these value cards. I'm a big fan of value cards. I, I'm willing to give up Temple for value a, a lot of the time. A lot of the time. All right, so your four packs. Got these four rares. They all look pretty sweet to me. All right, and we'll put this to the side, but Adamo, we have not forgotten about you. That box hopper is still yours, and we will open it soon. All right, Fasty, we got two packs for you. Let's see how we do. Let's see how we do. All right. <laughs> Oh, and of course, leave some comment on, on uh, ugh, leave some feedback on the uh, the second cam. I'm a fan of it this way, uh, but I will I will try something else if you guys don't like it. All right, Forbidden Alchemy. Hey, our first mythic hit, Machaeus the Unhallowed. I love this card. It's a value card. I love value. Of course, it's a little you know scary, a little spoopy if you if you really look at him. But you know, at the end of the day, that's just how it works. Sometimes you have to. You know, sign a deal with the devil to make value. All right. Um, of course, we have our uncommons. Oh, Travel Preps. What a great card. Kind of a, an Innistrad throwback. And this card was just an absolute bomb in Innistrad. And it was a common, too. Insane. Furnace Celebration. Ooh, okay. All right. That art is very sweet, of course. The core from Mirrodin. Uh, Fire Nice. Can't believe that's a common. Think Twice. Can't believe that's a common. Reckless Worm. Wow. So many of these cards are downshifted that I don't even... Of course, Faithless Looting was banned. Ulamog's Crusher, I love this art. Popper All-Star, man, this set was awesome, I love it. I bet a foil Ulamog's Crusher will be worth something because it's played in Popper. It's, you know, the, the one of the best things you can ramp into in Popper since it's, since, you know, it has an 8-8, it has Annihilator 2. You can play it as early as like turn four, I think, with ramp, 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 ramp decks. All right, an Acacian Crier from Time Spiral. All right, not the best. And a Golgari Grave Troll. Okay, okay, all right, all right. That, of course, has this special text of Dredge 6. The rest of the text honestly could be irrelevant. Dredge 6 is the reason why it's so powerful. Um, if you're playing a Dredge deck, Dredge style deck, if you're not really aware what, it, what they are, basically they just want to mill their entire deck 
and there's a lot of value engines and reason for why they do that. Golgari Grave Troll has been the staple. It's been banned before, and uh, you know we'll see we'll see what happens. Those type of decks are not super popular right now. Oh my gosh, Seb McKinnon's Ventral. This is so beautiful. This is my first time seeing this. I also love Ventral Rebirth as a card because it is value. It's also kind of this nonsensical. It's a it's like a it's a two for one, right? You grab back a card from your graveyard, and it's oftentimes a really good card, and you pop any target, often, you know, a creature. So you destroy a target creature, and you get another card back. Oh, it's so good. This art's so sweet. I feel a little touched. Also, I definitely have been taking more time than I should, so I'm going to keep the Artisan of Cosmic, like another value card. Ghoul Seed. Oh my gosh, I need to buy more of these boxes. Oh, I love these cards so much. Oh man, look at that. Look at that. Angelica Moon, another value card. Turn to Mist, potentially value. Cryer. Oh, wow, okay, so two packs for you, Fasty. Got, of course, our Machaeus, the Unhollowed, a nice little Mythic, and a Golgari Grave Troll. Kind of looks like a, <laughs> looks like a Grave Digger. Congrats on the little Mythic, and we'll keep going, Ronnie, for a single pack of Ultimate Masters. Let's see how we do, let's see how we do. All right, okay, here we go. Got a Homunculus, a little 2-2. Prey Upon Foil, okay, all right. And a Gorio's Vengeance! Alright, alright! Gosh, that's so scary. Look at that art. It's so freaky. Um, of course, there's a lot of combos that you can use with Gorio's Vengeance, but I'm not sure how good it is in uh, an actual limited format. Fecundity, of course, is an uncommon. Whenever a creature uh, dies, that creature's controller may draw a card, so it is a parallel effect, by the way. Become Immense, of course, insanely strong. Grave Strength, not so good, actually. I think. Maybe it's good in this format. Citrus Homunculus. Hey, the thing that makes the homunculi tokens. Look at that. Look at that. All right. And we'll keep going. We will keep going. Uh, Umbra, Flight of Fancy, Pulse of Marasa, Accomplice, Wild Mongrel, Defy Gravity, Ingot Chewer, and of course some other more commons. Hey, not bad for one pack. I'm pretty sure Gorio's Ventures were something. I mean, this card's really insane. All these new arts kind of are, are their own market. Little foil prey upon and homunculi. All right. And we'll keep going. We'll keep going. That pack was for you, Ronnie. YLV, we got four packs for you. Let's see how you do. Wow, I'm having such a good time opening these. Um, and we're not even halfway through the box. I've been taking my time. Um, hopefully you guys have had uh, an amazing time opening this as well. Um, let me know. Let me know. Let me know what sweet pulls you had. Maelstrom Pulse. Wow, I can't believe that's in the set too. Nice little sweet card. Shriek Maw, Spirit Karn. Mystic Retrieval. Oh, and so many of these cards have like this new... Oh, Archaeomancer! So much value! So much value! Um, so many of these cards... Oh, I like Vessel of Endless Rest as well. I have a foil one in my uh, commander deck, my five-color commander deck. Just because sometimes you just want to tuck something back to the bottom. And uh, it's kind of like inevitability. Like, I will put that big creature Planeswalker back into the bottom of my deck. Eventually, I will draw it. Fetch lands. Anyways, all right. <laughs> uh, next pack... Maelstrom Pulse. I think that must be worth something. It's definitely seeing a lot of play. Alright. Got, of course, a token. A little foil grave scrabbler. Alright, alright, alright. Sweet little value card as well. And a desolate lighthouse. Alright, that might be a miss. That might be a miss. And, of course, we have our uncommons. Living Lore, which was a uh, downshift. This was a rare in Dragons of Dark here. Young Pyro! Young Peasy. Nice little hit. Alright. Of course, we got our commons. Okay. Two more packs of YLV. So far we've had, we've had one Mythic, all right? So it's not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, we'd like to see some more. We'd like to see some more, of course. Yeah, let's open this pack first. All right, ah, finally got this pack. No, 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 all right. Finally got this pack to be open. Let's see how we do, let's see how we do. A little Spark Elemental took it. Oh, this brings back a lot of memories. I mean, I remember playing the card Spark Elemental um, and just thinking, wow, I did so much damage to my opponent. Anyways, <laughs> now of course that was not much. Penumbra Worm. All right, this is the card that makes that six six black worm t creature token. The Penumbra cards all had that, the same effect. They're all green creatures that when they died made a black token of the same card. So pretty sweet, pretty sweet. This card is obviously insane. Seven mana for a six six. When it dies, you get another six six. Super strong. Sovereigns of Lost Alara. What a funny card. So whenever you uh, attack. Uh, Alone, you can trigger Exalted. That's kind of Exalted's uh, shtick. Like, you have one hero, he goes and represents the cause, and he goes and gets it done. Then, whenever a creature you control attacks alone, you may search your library for an aura card that could enchant that creature, put it on the battlefield, attach that creature. So, 
what you do is you, you know, turn five, turn four, whatever, you play a creature, and then turn six, you play Sovereigns, you attack with that creature by itself, and you can get, like, the biggest aura possible, and you just put it on. Anyone's thinking Colossification? I'm thinking Colossification. Anyways, so I think the card might actually be one of those weird cards that goes up, um, you know, not by much, it's kind of casual, but it's really, really good. Ventral Rebirth, ah, oh, Seth McKinnon, you're back! Reviving Vapors, Channer's Edict, all right, super powerful cards, super powerful cards. And of course, we have our commons. Okay, all right, one more pack for YLB. Let's see how we do. Let's see how we do. All right, all right, all right. Zombie, Defy Gravity is our foil, all right. Hey, we got another Mythic Platinum Imperion. Eight mana for an eight eight. Your life total can't change. There was a, a, a deck running like Madcap something experiment where basically it just that it's like a sorcery that says look at the top cards of your deck until you find an artifact, put that artifact in play, and you like take damage equal to the number of cards you like revealed. Obviously, you could just play four mana, play that into play, and you don't take any damage because your life can't change. Well, you, you take damage up until you, you hit eight. Wait, no, 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 your life total can't change. So you just straight up don't take any damage. Um, I don't know, it's a pretty fun card. I, it's kind of fun because in game one it gets like burn decks. You play this against them. They look at it and they're like, I have to spend eight mana to burn that just to be able to deal damage to you and move forward. Now game two, they'll sideboard in their shatters, um, shatter-like effects. Uh, so you're not going to have that. But still, what a sweet little mythic kit. Look at that alt art as well. I love it. I love it. Desperate Ritual, Hero of Iroas, Golgari Thug are our uncommons. And we got our commons, of course. All right, all right. I'm enjoying this so far. I have no idea what the value of these cards are, but so far every pack has felt pretty meaningful. And I mean, every pack has felt meaningful. Okay, we'll keep going. That was for YLV, all right? And James, we got two packs for you. Let's see how we do. Let's see how we do. Notably, I, I think besides Liliana, was there another? Oh, Snapcaster, I think also is in this set, right? I I don't know what other uh sweet. Planeswalkers are in the set. That's that's my thing. All right, Spirit Token, Canker Abomination, Canker Abomination. All right, uh, and a Seize the Day. Oh, I love this card. This card is like the card that you put on the first page of your, you know, binder, right in the middle, just to remind yourself every time you're flipping through. Like, hey, no, Seize the Day. <laughs> All right, oh, we'll keep going. Uh, Fiend Hunter, Anger, Circular Logic are our uncommons. And of course, we have our usual bunch of comments. Okay, all right. And we keep going, keep going. James E, that was your first pack. I really hope you seize the day today, or tonight, whatever, whenever it is when you're watching this video. Um, and we'll keep going. Hey, I love this little Drake token. And another mythic. It's a foil mythic. Foil mythic alert. Look at this. Foil mythic Caracas. With the Destructing Shoal, which is still something, but look! Ah! This is probably a sweet hit, a foil mythic that's actually seeing play. Uh, I can't wait to look up how much this is. Let me grab a little sleeve. Can I have a little sleeve over here? Oh, man. Oh, man. I, yes, I do. Here, I can just throw this guy in the sleeve, because I have to imagine something like this is definitely worth something. I mean, it's such, just so clean looking. It, it's uh, it's the new print, so it actually has that legendary um, border. And, it, oh, James! Nice hit! You really seized the day! <laughs> Alright, and Disrupting Shoal. And we do have our uncommons. Alright, one, two, Urban Evolution. I love that card. Value, value, five good, good stuff. I'm gonna keep looking at the camera and saying that and hopefully annoy nobody. Alright, James, congratulations again. Foil, Mythic, Caracas, look at that! Look at that! I'm gonna be a little sad if I look it up and it's like a $10 card, but hopefully it is so much value and we'll. We're all gonna be happy, we can just believe it. All right, Matt D, we have two packs for you. Let's see how we do, let's see how we do. It is a surprise to me, I keep forgetting that that first card is foil. Some of these foils are a little bit not as uh, foily, if you know what I mean, so it is a little hard for me to tell. A little Generator Servant is our foil. Squee, Globl uh, Goblin Nabob. Everyone's favorite goblin who always is there for you, even if you don't want him, he's there, all right. Um, we got our uncommons, of course, and we have, ooh, Rune Snag was printed in this too. Ah, oh, this must have been such a fun set to draft. I took a little break from Magic when this set happened, so I never got a chance to draft it. 
please let me know how you felt drafting it. I will try to make sure I draft some with some of my friends after this. And uh, gosh, this feels so fun. Like the triple ultimate masters format of this. Let me know. Let me know. All right. Next pack for Matt D. A little token action. Verdant Eidolon. All right. Whenever you cast a multicolor spell, you may return Verdant Eidolon from your graveyard to your hand. All the Eidolons have that line of text. Um, and I do like like that line of text. I do like casting multicolored spells and getting some value. Of course, 4 mana for 2-2 two, two, is a very expensive card. It's not really the best card, but I love it. I love it so much. All right. Visions of Beyond. Draw a card. If a graveyard has 20 or more cards in it, draw three cards instead. So this is a cantrip, but it can be up to an Ancestor Recall if your opponent has 20 or more cards in, in their graveyard. Not too hard to achieve if you're running a mill deck or if your kind of game goes late. So it's actually a pretty sweet card. Obviously, it doesn't see play in Legacy and those type of formats because you can't reliably get actual three cards, and this is not as good as Brainstorm, but still, very sweet card. And the best part about it is look at that art. Therese Nielsen. Oh, man. I think this set is amazing. I really haven't opened that many packs, and, like, Therese Neil Like, they really... They just I hope they do the same thing with Double Masters. Like... At the end of the day, value is a big deal, right? And a Double Masters does cost a decent amount of money, but if it can throw back these sweet arts like this, that just kind of, you're just enjoying yourself as you're opening and you're just, you know, appreciating the cool art. And of course, if it's a fun draft environment, Hermag Angler, they reprinted that too. Beautiful. Um, I think at the end of the day, that's that would be satisfactory for me. That would be satisfactory for me. All right. All right. Five going to Chris M. Let's see how we do. Let's see how we do, Chris. All right. Here we go. Elemental token. A foil Phyrexian altar? This has to be worth something. I have to. Like, Phyrexian altar, like, by itself is already such a valuable card. And this is foil? And a Raging Ravine. All right, all right. That's that's something not worth that much. Buried Alive, Penumbra Worm, Blast of Genius. Got some commons as well. Uh, I, I think this should be getting a sleeve. I mean, I, I don't know the value, but I have to wager a guess that this is actually worth something for real because I think this card is really good. I mean, look at that. Sacrifice a creature, add one mana of any color. Uh, That effect can help you go infinite very, very easily, especially because it's colored mana. Anyways, we'll price check. We'll see. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I'm so sorry if I'm completely, completely wrong. Oh, man. Oh, man. But uh, I think it's actually more enjoyable for me to not look up all the prices, so I kind of just kind of open i'm like oh what a sweet card i can i can talk about the art Seder wayfinder a little foil very nice little foil and a gadok teague all right all right all right um dreamscape artist rise from the tides brazen scourge all right we're on commons and then we got our commons got a little treasure cruise nice i actually enjoyed a little bit more when i don't know the prices so i can actually appreciate the art tell you the stories and not just focus everything around value though so value is important of course and of course all right next and got Chur Foil. Hey, a Phyrexian Tower. My gosh, a lot of these cards really like sacrificing creatures. Man, the art on these are just so sweet. Look at that. Creepy, but very sweet. Who, who did this? Dimitir Marinsky. All right, very sweet, very sweet. Hey, a little Kitchen Finks action. Devoted Druid. Of course, that should be like a buck or two. Lab Maniac. That same thing. Should be a buck or two. And we have our, un our commons. All right, all right. Well, we'll keep going. So... That's four packs open. Wait a moment. Did I miss someone? Oh, I got it. I got it, guys. I said that RoboCop is getting two when they're getting four. All right, all right. I messed up. I messed up. My bad, my bad. But at least we caught it. So we still have two more packs left for Chris M. I miscounted one as a foil. And then we'll open two more. All right. So, another pack for Chris M. I think you've been doing so well so far. I think you've been doing really well. Fairy Rogue token. Aether Snipe foil. A little Vexing Devil. All right, all right. Kind of not the best hit here. And Rally the Peasants. War Leaders Helix. Love how they reprinted that. And a Dakmoor Salvage. And of course, we have our commons. All right, all right. One more pack for Chris M. Let's see how we do. Let's see how we do. Hey, got our um, ooze token. Mystic Retrieval is our foil. And a Containment Priest. 
they reprinted it finally this was only in that commander deck for so long and uh it was the only reason that commander deck was good because obviously this deceased play in legacy um it's a great card it's a nice little hate bear or a little hate human cleric uh majoring network emancipation angel magma and of course we got our comments all right all right those are your five packs i think this foil altar really really kind of stood out to me hopefully i'm not wrong containment priest vexing devil tower gadok teague raging ravine all right all right pretty sweet hits pretty sweet hits and the last four packs two robocop let's see how we do let's see how we do all right okay we have a zombie token malevolent whispers and a light from the loam not too shabby not too shabby Dawn Charm, Reviving Vapors, Buried Alive, and we have our commons. All right, all right. Life from the Loam, of course, is a very big all-star in the Legacy Land deck that only plays lands, so, and Life from the Loams. So it's still a very sweet card. I actually really, really enjoy this art. I lo everything just feels um, new and amazing. All right, Double Cleave, Target Creature gains Double Strike until end of turn. All right. And another mythic, Lord of Extinction. Of course, I don't think, I think this is one of the less valuable mythics, but still, it's a nice little mythic action. All right, we have our uncommons, Plume Veil, and of course we have our commons. All right, all right, two more packs, two more packs. So far I've been having a great time. So far I've been having a great, great time with these. Walker of the Grove, Spoils of the Vault, all right. Wow, so much text. Choose a card name, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card with that name, then put that card into your hand. Exile all other cards revealed this way, and you lose one life for each of the exile cards. So, you could just kill yourself with this card. <laughs> In fact, that's probably what this guy did. He was like, I really want that helm, champion's helm. And he got it. It just cost him. Dearly. Ah, uh, red cap, Golgari charm, a boneyard worm, a two mana star star that could be like a you know, ginormous card. So, pretty sweet little hit. Pretty sweet little hit. And the very last pack of the box. Not including the box topper that Adamo got. But the very last actual pack of the box. Let's see how we did. Let's see how we do. Foil Gadok Teague? Alright. That's like two foil rares and a foil mythic. Oh man, this box is insane. And a stirring wild wood. Alright, alright. We know that's not that much. But still, what a sweet couple of hits. Alright, Counter Squall. Phalanx Leader. Hero of Lena. Tower, and of course we got our commons. All right, all right. Take a quick peek. Take a quick peek at the loot. Of course, this Gadok Teague is foil. Um, foil multiplier, of course, is not terribly high on some of these. Most of them, unless it happens to be like the first printing. Like I know in Masters Twenty Five Prosh, the foil version of that would be like you know, it's like a twelve multiplier or something. Because it's only one you can get foil, right? But we have not forgotten. The box hopper, that's going to be like, you can't read that. But hey, let's do this. Let's do this. All right. All right. Okay. Got to open it carefully. I'm not very good at opening these box hoppers, so I'm just going to try to do it without damaging the card. And, oh gosh, it's already a little warped, I think, right? Yeah, it's a little bit because it's a foil. And it's a, no, just a little Raging Ravine. I'm pretty sure that... The Raging Ravine is not that valuable um, as a box hopper. It's less than the average, uh, but I'll, I'll look it up and check. All right, all right, look at that. Sweet little box hopper. All right, so that was the box, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we'll be doing another one, of course, soon as part of the Masters series. And uh, until then, like this video if you like it and subscribe if you haven't so you can stay tuned for the next master set but until then see you in the next one i'm a big fan of value